Hey guys, Kevin here. Guess what? Get my Freedom Card. Okay, lots of people ask me about this Zero X EA. Uh, it could cost by many uh, things. Today I'm going to cover this symptom that uh, the printer is going to slowly move to the right, then going to smash all the way to the left, and bam, and you get a Zero X EA. That's the symptom. So when you start a printer, it's going to slowly move to the right. What the printer doing is uh, it's trying to find a starting point. It will set that starting point to be point zero. Once it uh, stop at point zero, it's going to move to the left. It starts slowly and uh, seems everything's okay. And watch this, bam, and he smashed into this f***ing guy right there. Epson uses uh, this timing belt or called optical encoder to determine how far the print that travels. The belt has uh, vertical light and dark light and dark marks. So the printer was set from zero, travel to the left to, uh, let's say, 2,000 marks. Because it's assuming your point zero is really far right of the printer. Let's say you have some dirt right here, so it covers like a uh, hundred marks. So there will be one dark mark for all of it. So the uh, the printhead will run out, run off distance, run out tapes before it slam into the left. So you need to clean that. Another chance is if you have something uh, obstructs, let's say a piece of paper um, on the right, so your printhead cannot reach all the way to the right. So it's setting point zero at the wrong place. Although you got a clean belt, you're gonna run off tape before you reach uh, 2,000 marks. Uh, in this case, there's no jam paper. The belt is clean, so there must be something else stop the the printhead carriage movement. Uh, sometimes caused by this cover get not closed correctly, so it get uh, uh, caught. Uh, sometimes it's that piece of plastic get to stick out. It's raised too high, so it auto sink, and uh, it cannot move. But in this case, it stop at something else. See, it always stop here. You can hear the click that it hits something. Uh, don't worry about this piece sticking out. That piece is always under the carriage. Uh, uh, so that's not the piece that causing the problem. To take a closer look, we need to take the scanner off, then we take the cover off. I'm going to put a link above about how to take the scanner off, a uh, scanner and cover off. It's pretty easy. Two minutes. Now look up and down and uh, see where the carriage gets stopped. In this case, you can see there are a piece broken right here and uh, it's going to hit the motor. Uh, let me give you another view and you can see this piece going to hit the motor. What you have is a broken carriage frame. So you can go to bchtechnologies.com and uh, go search for carriage. And uh, you're going to see this Epson Printhead carriage with the PW sensor. You want to want buy the one with the PW sensor, and you don't uh, trust me. You don't want to install P the PW sensor yourself. So if you like uh, on the, do the old-fashioned, you can go to uh, categories, printer parts, uh, printer carriage, and it's right here. And then once you're in. You're going to select the model B W I W thirty six. So that's going to work for thirty six forty thirty six twenty. A week later, you're going to get something like this in the mail. Use your fingernails to pry up the little tab on here and here and uh, on the left. Uh, this cable is go to the PW sensor, so you can get a long uh, needle or something, just uh, remove it. 
And then you can use data the same needle, push in from that little spot from left and right. Uh, if you cannot find that spot, I'm going to post a video link above and I'll show you how to remove the, the printhead. Uh, this printer doesn't have a working printhead, uh, so I don't have to screw on. But uh, uh, in the real one, you got to have uh, three screws to remove. Then you can remove the cable. Let's take a second and uh, look at the cables. You have a two wider cable, one to the left, one to the right of the printhead. Then you have a longer, smaller cable that's go to this uh, called the CSSA board. And then you have a shorter cable that you just remove from the PW sensor. So we got the two large cables, two smaller cables. Remember the clear timing belt I mentioned? Here it is. Uh, that's the next thing we're going to remove. And pay attention where it comes through. Use a number two Phillips screwdriver. You'll be able to remove uh, three screws from this side panel. Uh, pull a little bit, then remove the uh, the timing belt. Now you can pull off the timing belt from the printhead carriage to get it out of the way. Now you can pull and remove the brown drive belt. On the left, you can just uh, slide it through the uh, through that opening, and uh, that will come out. Now we need to remove this uh, with ink assembly. So our first one, uh, there are two screws. First one is here. The second one, you have to slide the thing to the right. Then it's hidden underneath here. Then pull this tube off. Very, very carefully remove the, the waste tank unit. What you pay attention is this little lever with that tiny, tiny spring. I usually have a, a magnet nearby, so I can uh, save that spring. Uh, to install this bag, you need a, a, a rubber band. Uh, I'm going to put a link above how to remove and install this unit. This piece of plastic stops the printhead moving to the right. To disable it, unscrew this screw from the back. At the front, front this tab, and uh, you can slide to the right and push it in. Do not remove that cover, just push it in. And then now slide this tab all the way to the right, then push it in. Now the only thing stop us is the motor. Again, you don't have to completely remove it. Just push it in a little bit, make a short flash, the printer can pass. And after that, we need to uh, uh, remove the cables to, for the printer to get out. Oh, I mean printer carriage. So leave the cable and the uh, small cable go first. Remove the two smaller cables, then the larger cable can slide it through. And uh, now the thing can be removed from the from the rail. Uh, you can see how bad it is. Those things are uh, they're moving at a really really high speed, and uh, the drive voltage is forty two volts, so <laughs> it's pretty violent. Now you can pull off the drive belt, put it on the new unit. Make sure the teeth side is towards you. The rail has to go between those, so it's not, uh, it's not easy to put it on the first time. It's going to go in, then it's going to stop, and then you're going to push a little bit to make it smooth. So I think just repeat it backwards and put a, put the motor on. Uh, for the drive belt, uh, you can push this one to your right a little bit to help you. Uh, sometimes I got a screwdriver and uh, push it to the right a little bit. Do not push it too hard or put it too much. And uh, just a little bit, see, it's on. 
uh, if you too, put too much, it's going to lose that spring, and you're going to have another video to troubleshoot that. And you can do this before or after you put a drive belt on. And, uh, you can push those uh, tabs, the plastic tabs, back. Now put the timing belt through the optical reader. And then uh, put the end on this uh, side panel. And put the cable back. Remember, we have a short little cable and a long little cable. The short little, little cable is for the PW sensor. So you have to go through the hoop and connect to the PW sensor. The bigger cable has a short and long too. The short one is to your right, and the longer one is to the left. And uh, the blue side should be facing you, and uh, the metal side facing the bottom. Now we only got uh, the little long cable, and that little long cable is for the CSIC board. The CSIC board has little arms on, like this, one on the bottom on your right, one on the top on your left. Again, I have a whole video about uh, how to uninstall and install the, the print head, so I'm not going to repeat it too much here. And you just replace the whole carriage. Congratulations! I hope you enjoyed this video. Visit us at www.bchtechnology.com or locally, Greensboro, North Carolina. Cheers!